Greetings and welcome to another exciting episode of Analog Pod. I'm your host, Leonard Carrillo, and together we're going to explore, probe, and celebrate the passions and very interesting journeys of artists and musicians from across the herd of play. Today, I'm very happy to have with us what I would categorize as the dynamic duo. The first half of this duo is a renowned singer, songwriter, composer, and performer, Miriam Stockley. The other half of this fantastic duo is a legendary engineer, audio tech extraordinaire, Rod Hausen. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode of Analog Pod. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends and others if you enjoy this podcast. So enjoy. Well, we're here with Miriam Stockley and Rod Hausen. Rod, how are you guys doing? Absolutely fine. We're fine. Hanging in there. I mean, families yeah. are okay and everything. Touch, yeah. touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> touch you know, we, we've been yeah. really careful. I have to say that we locked down probably two weeks before anybody in this country oh, locked down. Okay, awesome. We, we saw the writing on the yeah. wall. So that's it. We went into our little bubble and that's where we've stayed, literally. Well, you know, Rod, I have to say this. If I had to be locked down with someone, uh, you you couldn't have chosen anyone better. I Absolutely. Mean, you know, I mean, just have be I real honest. Lately that I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we guys, we I, first of all, I'm very. I, I can't tell you how honored I am to have you guys on the show. I have been. Uh, we've been friends for, I don't know, many years. Yeah, many years. Yeah, we'll just say that. We'll just say. Yeah. We'll just say the many years. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and we got to, we got to know each other really kind of a, kind of in an obscure way. It was, it was, it, it, it had to do with music, but it was a, a different situation. But, uh, um, I remember one of the first conversations that we had way back then, um, one of the people that we were dealing with, they said, you know, learn, do you know who we were talking to? And I said, uh, yeah, I said, you know, it's uh, Miriam and Rod. And, uh, and I think it was uh, Tom. Tom. And mm -hmm. uh, then we had, you know, uh, a, a couple of other people. And he goes, well, do you know who Miriam is? I said, okay. <laughs> I said, she's, she's a very attractive woman married to an incredibly beautiful man. And I said, so I don't know. I said, what? She goes, he goes, do some, do some Googling. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, after about 45 minutes, I just sat there and I, I, I remember walking out of my office and walking back into his office and kind of going, why didn't you warn me? <laughs> why didn't you tell me? Oh, okay. Is, because yeah. Miriam, you, you know, you, with your, you know, your, your, you're you're a performer you're a singer you're a songwriter you're a composer i mean you have accomplished so so much okay so let's 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 kind of get it let, let's let's kind of get in the uh let's get in the the uh time machine the delorean and let's let's set the flux capacitor to go backwards a little bit and yeah. uh let's uh let's go back and then i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do my very very best to to to, to do to hit both of you because rod your your history <laughs> yeah yeah when i when i told somebody today i don't know if you can see this rod can you can you see this this base over here i can mm -hmm. see that one yeah absolutely. okay that's yeah. my brand new stadowski oh really Ooh, i just yeah. picked it up today so i was telling i was telling the guy that i i'd ordered it and it just had just come in and i told him i said he goes you learned how's the video podcast going anyway uh, and I said, yeah, I said, you know what, guess who I'm interviewing today? And so I gave him the guys this background. He goes, are you serious? He goes, when's it coming out? I said, uh, it, it, you know, I, I like to release them, you know, every week. So this will probably be in about four weeks. Right. And he goes, well, I just can't, I can't wait to, so anyways, but, uh, and what, anyway. and he, and what is his name? Uh, his name is Juan. One. Yes, and he is the, he's the curator of of, of bass. Uh, bass. Oh my gosh, she's gonna kill me. Okay, I, I gotta get this right. He's the curator for bass. I should know this. I my mind has gone blank. 
Okay, I will post it up here. I'm gonna, I'll give him a little bit of a deal up here. The only because I, I'm going through a senior moment right now. Uh, <laughs> oh, we yeah. have been. Yeah, but anyway, he's a, he's a, he's a wonderful person. In fact, I'm actually gonna have him on. I, I, I learned okay. some things about him today that I thought, okay, we, I got to get you on this podcast here, this video podcast. So anyway, okay, let's go back. Okay, we 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 set the time machine. Miriam, let's start with you. Okay. When's the first time you decided to pursue music? And I'm not talking as a profession, just to say, hey, listen, I I think I can sing. Right. Well, once again, and I think I'm quoting from somebody else that you actually interviewed. Music found me because I was very young at the time. My father had a beautiful voice, my late dad, and he would climb into our crib and he would sing to us. And he was the one who actually taught my sister and I how to sing harmonies, oh. which I mean, I, literally, I must have been three or four at the time. And so literally, by the time I was eight, nine, I was then performing in school productions, and then it went from there. I have never thought about doing anything else, ever. Well, you haven't done anything else, <laughs> except true. for make this incredible music. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, for those of you in the audience that uh, look up Google, Google, Mary, I'll, in fact, we'll, I'll, I'll give you her website. Uh, we'll just post it here on the bottom here, but you, you need to look her music up. I was, I was listening to your, to uh, some of your music this morning. And uh, like I said, it, it went right through to my soul. Oh, and oh. I just sat there and I went, okay, I should be listening to this every day. <laughs> I mean, it just, I'll tell you a, a wonderful story. It was many years ago. Um, Rod and I were lying in bed at night. We were watching a bit of television and on came the show. It was about children with cancer. <clears throat> and it was a young child. She couldn't have been more than maybe five or six. She'd lost her hair and she was going in for an MRI. She was terrified. And she had her little dolly with her. And they said to her, you know, what would you like to hear? And she requested a song. And the next thing, up came a song called Perfect Day that I recorded, you know, mm, back then. Mm. And the two of us just wept. <laughs> it was the most emotional moment. And that's when I realized, you know, this is, we're doing something wonderful here. You know, we are giving mm. something back to people. That's what music is all about. Yep. That is what it's all about. Yeah, yep. it's, it's, it's to touch, it's, uh... You know, no, and and, and Miriam, I don't know. I know very, very few people, other than you, that can do what you do. I mean, there's some people out there, and you know who they are. Mm -hmm. But you're in that class. You know, you're you're in that. As far as I'm concerned, you're in that top five for me. And wow. that probably means nothing to my audience, but but to me, that means a lot. And I it, it, to 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 call you and Rod. A, a friend, I am so honored. I am and you know what? The feeling, the feeling is mutual. Oh, the feeling is absolutely mutual. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that because uh, you have given me definitely a lot more than I have given you. <laughs> but uh, so we've so, learned a lot from you. Yeah. We really have over the last. Well, few well yeah, yeah. You probably learned what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's and I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. That's part of the learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, uh, that, that, uh, that, that'll, that'll hurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just look at Leonard. Uh, so, so Rod, tell me a little bit about your history. You're, you're, you're a guitar player. You're a musician. Well, give, give me some, give me some, give us, give us some, um, give us you some. Back. Out, you just ruled out two things that that I'm not really. <laughs> So, well, I, I know one, you, you play guitar. Yeah, I was a guitarist. Yeah. I was a musician until I met so many really, really good guitarists and musicians. And this is why I say when you know you're talking about in front of the camera, right? It's all about chutzpah, and the way you have it is by being young and thinking you're the best in the world. And it's before you meet any of the people who are the best in the world, right? And, 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 and you, I have, you have met some of, some of the best in the world. Yeah, 
I, I have, you know, and I've made, made some glorious mistakes. <laughs> in my, in my arrogance, you know, introduced to composers who've had, you know, 20, 20 number one hits and I've gone, no, nah, I don't like that very much. I can't see it getting past number eight. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been there. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the, early, the early stuff, I mean, very early, my stepfather was tone deaf. Um, my mother loved music, and she had an upright piano, and she used to use what they used to call a community songbook. Right, everyone had one in England, you know, and she'd go through, you know, Little Brown Jug and all these things, and she would play the old, you know, the, the hand going up and down like, uh, and and singing, singing away, and and I used to think that was brilliant. Then and, and that's how I really got started out as a passion for music was was her, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's uh, uh, but yeah, don't discount yourself. I mean, I you know, yeah, I mean, you're. I mean, you have you have kind of a treasure. I mean, you showed me not long ago. Well, I shouldn't say long ago. It's been it's been a while, but you you have a guitar given to you by kind of a kind of a special guitarist and uh, uh, Mr. Pete Townsend. So uh, you know, I was uh, I was I I still I still bask in that. <laughs> Okay. Well, that, that, there was rather than given, I took it. Yeah, yeah. Had, you kind of didn't you put it back together? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I have to explain quickly. Okay. Oh, I, since I, I brought it up. <laughs> yeah. I he used to buy um, 14, 15 guitars at once, and he bought a, about 14 or 15 Les Paul Gold Deluxes back 72, I guess it was 72 slash three. And um, I started setting them up because this is something I could do, you know, changing all the, the bridge pieces and uh, actually trying to compensate for the inaccuracies that Gibson set up, right? And, and changing all the, the heads to Grovers and all this kind of stuff. So that was something his guitar tech couldn't really do. And I said, hey, I'll do that. So I picked up this one, it was just in just in in the room in rehearsal i think and i said this neck on this is, is phenomenal it just feels really good so he took it from me and he said yeah it's all right he said don't get attached to any of my guitars <laughs> right so, <laughs> and sure enough that night that was the number one and we were doing quadrophenia so we had a stack of them on stands yeah that was the one he first picked up and it went slightly out of tune, so he destroyed it. <laughs> so, right. Just go boof. As you said. So, as you do, and me, I was at the side of the stage and I thought, no, he's not going to get away with that. So, I rushed off and I rushed out and I grabbed the neck and I grabbed what was left of the body and I took it in the back. And I subsequently had it rebuilt by a wonderful guy called Chris Eckenshaw, who's a, a guitar maker in, in the UK. And he turned it into a dark oak sunburst and yeah, put everything back together. But yeah, that's its heritage. And he went, oh, sure, you want the bits, fine. <laughs> so, so. Well, you know, when my, when my bass goes out of tune, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so sure. I just climb it on the ground and, you know, just, you know, yeah. that, you know, yeah. yeah. So now, what happens to me when I sing out of tune? Do I throw? Yeah. Do I throw you these? Start pounding your head up against the wall or something? You know? No, I throw the Neumann. You know, yeah. yeah, AI, whatever it is, eighty-seven onto the floor. Yeah. That's She's it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those and those are really cheap microphones too. Yeah. Very cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, Miriam, so and, and thank you for clarifying that, Rod, because I, you know, I, I've told that I've told that story many times, and people are just kind of going. How, how, you know, so anyway, I'm glad you clarified that story because I, because I, I think I was off on a few things, but, uh, 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 so Miriam, when did you start, when did you start, when did you start singing? Um, now I know you, you and your sister started out, uh, well, tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, well, we, we started singing together when we were kids, but the, really speaking, I would say that I was probably around 12, 13 when I did my first actual recording session. I recorded a song called Burn, 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 
and was all about kids burning down their school. It was immediately banned by the local radio station. So it never even got played. But after that, I started doing commercials and, you know, band work. I joined a band, a gig band. So I was trying to fit in school sessions straight after school, straight to the gig at night. And uh, it didn't all work, you know, uh, as, as something had to give. So literally, you know, I didn't manage to go to college because quite frankly, this, my, my career was just full-time. It was full-time. That's what had happened. So I worked the session industry, the gig industry. I toured with my sister. We had a hit, well, few hits actually in South Africa. And when I was 18, I'd had enough of the politics in South Africa and I took myself off to England. Okay, so I was gonna ask you about what, what, how old were you when you moved to uh, England? Uh, I know you were from, you know, you're, you're from South Africa. Uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, and so you're 18, and then your career just kind of just kept going, or was there a little well, bit of a break? I, I, I got my grounding in South Africa. I learned, I learned how to sight read everything I was doing session wise, um, the professionalism, you know, getting there, doing the job, doing it quickly, not messing around. You know, this is something that, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but there when I got to England, I, everything was a little bit loose, you know. People would rock in whenever, sorry, there was an elephant in the tunnel or whatever they, you know, whatever excuse <laughs> they would use. And, and, and so what, what year was this? Uh, Boy, it man. was in the 80s, early 80s. Okay, actually. all right. Well, that kind so, of explains a little bit. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, so I kind of got the reputation for being somebody who was quite kind of tough in the studios, you know. What can you do? You can't, you know, you can't have too many chiefs. Yeah. So somebody had to take charge. So um, I worked my way through. And when it got to the early 90s, I was doing a lot of commercials. I mean, a lot. I must have done thousands upon thousands of television commercials. One of them was for a car, which is the ugliest thing you've ever seen in your life. It's called a Fiat Tempra. But I started doing this kind of improvisation, yodeling stuff over it and, um, people started saying we want to buy this what is it and it was kind of new for the sound at the time we made it into a single and this thing shot up to number two in the charts three in the charts i think the, the uk charts mm. and then we made an album and you know did videos and promotion and tv and all that stuff and that's really how my solo career as an adult got started even though i'd done it for years before that as a young child teen okay mm -hmm. all right and and I'm, I'm sure we could probably go just a little bit even more deeper than that i mean some of your experiences yeah, I mean, and yeah and, uh, after that yes after that i then it's really interesting because i moved from that sort of number three hit to the next project which was called Addy amos now i don't know if you are familiar with it at all but no. Addy amos was two guys, uh, Carl Jenkins and Mike Rutledge. And they used to be part of a, of a jazz group called Soft Machine. Do you remember Soft Machine? I don't, I, I don't, I wish I, I, I okay. wish I would have been boned up on that, sorry. So no problem. They owned a production company. They heard that I did this kind of yodeling Celtic stuff. So they booked me to do commercials for them. One of the commercials happened to be for Delta Airlines. And that commercial, was played and played and played throughout the world. I mean, all over the world. And once again, people said, where can we buy this? Okay, let's turn it into a single. We made it into a single and then we made an album and then we made another album and we toured and we toured and we, you know, we, we performed in Japan and we performed at the Albert Hall. And it was, it was a huge success. I made what, four or five albums with them as with Eddie Yeah, about five albums. There's platinums and golds yeah. and things all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's while it. I was still doing session work, yeah. you see, I'm, I'm a session person, yeah. I, you know, sure. that's who I am really deep down. So yeah. I couldn't give that part of it up. Just had to continue doing that. They did um, Albert Hall and, you know, yeah. some big, big venues and stuff. And oh yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. get much bigger than that. I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of the gold standard for for venues. Yeah. So I'm curious, how did you guys meet? I don't think I've ever asked you that question. 
It was through a mutual friend, yeah. session singer friend of ours. He yeah. was he was getting over a broken relationship. He was kind of living in her house for a while. And um, no, not the girlfriend. This no. is with the friend. <laughs> <laughs> just a friend. Just a friend. Yeah. And um, and I met him there, and I actually thought I thought he was an accountant. I thought you're either an accountant or you are part of the mafia. I couldn't work <laughs> out which because this guy had yeah. long hair down to here. Yeah. He wore dark shades inside. Yes, yeah, right. Right. And he wore the silver suit. It's a silver mohair suit. You know, it's a, what's, yeah, right. Just, yeah, you know, I've seen some pictures of you, Rod. Or, I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, that's what started the relationship, huh? It yeah. did. In fact, on the first date, he asked me to marry him. And I said, I'm actually married to somebody else. <laughs> 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 so, but... You know, as things go, sometimes things don't work out. You know, yeah. my, my, my ex-husband and I, we are great friends. We are in business together. Um, him and Rod are great friends. It just didn't work out. So mm -hmm. the two of us um, got together. Yeah. yeah, it was a very young marriage on their part. And, you know, they were adult enough to realize this is going not very far. So, you know, absolutely. And we, we are great friends. Well, He's one know, of the in the world I would trust with with everything, including my wife. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Well, you uh, you were you're you're a very lucky man, Rod. I, that's all I gotta say. Thank oh, you. I know. It, it, it's it's mutual. We yeah. we. Thank you, Don. Yes. Yeah. I can't so, do without you. So, you're, my, my so your Rod, your experience uh, with the Who? Tell give us give us a little bit of uh, give us a little snapshot here. Well. Um, First off, the introduction. I mean, how did I get involved with them? I had been, I've been gigging around, you know, I'd done universities and, and, you know, quite big gigs. I mean, my first, first ever gig was to 2000 people. <laughs> because I don't know if you ever remember a guy called Daryl Adams, banjo player from Portland. You know, he, he yeah. wrote, he wrote Portland Town, which I think Joan Bias covered or whatever, you know. And and he was, you know, one of his just, you know, his, and he was a total alcoholic. So my <laughs> agency said, Oh my God, you better go up with him. You know, I mean, you're on the bill anyway, but but if he can't make it, you know, then judge it, right? Don't go on early, go on on the top spot, you know. And sure enough, he was totally, totally out of it. He could just manage to get onto stage with his banjo, which was all, <laughs> all out of tune, and say, okay, so I'm not going to do so much tonight, but I'm going to introduce you to a friend of mine, right? Because he's really good and you're going to love him, okay? Upon which he staggered off the stage. And... And I got thrown on and I did a fantastic set because as I'm saying, those days chutzpah. See, I didn't know what was bad, what was good. I just knew, hey, this is what I want to do. Yeah, so I enjoyed myself I, for half an hour, 45 minutes. I think they wanted 20 minutes, but there you go. And I thought, okay, I can do 2000 people. I can do anything. So that's how it got rolling. So I did that for a while, made money. And I saw all the friends in my agency were peaceful people like Chicken Shack, Savoy Brown Blues Band, all these, you know, of that ilk. And they were all earning about $3 a night each. And they were traveling, humping their own gear and doing all this. You know. And I thought, I don't want to do that. Because up to that point, I'd been one E-type Jaguar, one guitar and a pair of boots, you know, no gear. So okay let me just buy gear so with the money i was getting from the gigs i used to buy recording gear and that's that was my passion anyway was electronics you know i knew quite a bit about it so i built a studio in the place that i was and i had it all remoted and i thought i'm going to have to play everything myself so i had an old wind organ you know all set up in one room and i had a keyboard and i had a bass and i had so and i learned I, you know, I made all these things so I could drop in from the floor, spin back anywhere in the house, you know, all, all remoted, which for those days was something. Yeah. A friend of mine said, um, do you mind if I bring my boss to come and look at this? Because 
this is amazing. I said, of course, absolutely, no problem. So her boss was Pete Townsend. So he came and he said, well, he said, do you fancy building a studio for me? And I said, well, absolutely, yeah, sure. He didn't mean a small attic studio. He had one of those, right? He meant a quadraphonic huge thing on his property. <clears throat> excuse me, down in uh, Goring on Thames, is about 70 miles outside of London. So this is what we did. A couple of years building it and putting it together. And, and Was that, that eel, eel pie? Eel pie, yeah. The original eel pie. And um, it, was, it was a phenomenal experience. There, there was never, well, no, there was one, one point at which we ran out of money, um, which will amuse you. Um, and I said, <laughs> he came rushing in and he said, oh man, uh, I don't know how to say this, but I think we've run out of money. Because <laughs> we were just spending everything in the catalog, you know? He'd go, wow, that looks nice. Um, how much is it? $5,000. Okay, we'll have one of those. Oh, hold on, more quadraphonic. Have two of those. Okay. So th this was this was the genius. <laughs> yeah, we've run out of money. So I went, all right, well, you don't have to pay me this month. That'll be that'll be fine, you know. And he said, I don't know if that's actually gonna help, but okay. <laughs> a few days later, a few days later he came and he said, I've got a I got a royalty check-in for Tommy. We can go again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll order another couple of 24 tracks. He said, that's it. So that that was the way of the world. And we did quite a lot of stuff there, including Bad Company's first album, which okay. was the, you know, which was a, an education, and um, uh, yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of Who stuff, including Quadrophenia, was was all mixed there. Some of it was recorded elsewhere, but yeah, and that was that was the Who story basically. Well, I, I recently saw a documentary on on the Who, and uh, uh, Pete was talking about kind of his obsession with electronics and 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 so I, I, it, it 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 kind of it kind of goes along with what you're saying it's just like yeah. he did he just didn't know when to quit it was like you know he, he, and he still has to he was sitting there doing the interview he still has stuff in behind that he had originally oh. got for this and originally got for that and did this and this so so this is fascinating that you're because oh, you, you probably installed that or probably you know had something to do with that Probably, probably did, but you know he's done so much of it himself, mm -hmm. and uh, he, because his right ear is gone, um, through trying to keep Keith Moon in time all over all the years. You know, every time he played a fill, he came out wrong, so he so he'd be going, turning and going. So his right ear against the stack, he said, that's what made me deaf, going like this to Keith. You know? so, so he'd be mixing with one ear, mm. like this, <laughs> to two speakers. His ears are better than mine with both ears. I tell it's you one ear. Yeah, yeah. just go <laughs> oh, that way. So, uh, so that's probably enough about Pete, and let's get on to. Yeah, no, no, this is, this is great. So, so Miriam, because you're just, uh, you're, you've had some experience in doing some background vocals for a, a, a number of different situations mm -hmm. uh the, the 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 one that uh i was not aware and this was until a number of years ago and, and i think i think you sent me the video uh but you sang background when uh it was a it was a queen um uh tribute no not a tribute let me oh let me back that that's a bad word. Uh, a queen. A, it was a celebration. Well, it was the. It was a Freddie Mercury tribute after he. Oh, okay. Okay. And you you got a chance to sing background vocals with Queen and a number of different artists, and uh, I was like, I, I go, <laughs> I know her. <laughs> I, I, I know that lady. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. was your experience with i mean working with all of those different various artists i mean what, yeah. what, what was that like it was i mean it was an experience because this is a long concert there's a lot of people coming on stage one has to be very organized you have to you know learn your stuff know what you're doing and god bless him i was with um 
Chris Thompson, <clears throat> who is the most wonderful singer. He was the lead singer with the Manfred Mann Band. So Blinded by the Light is Chris Thompson. So I was with him and the other singer was Maggie Ryder, wonderful, you know, singer, writer, composer. Um, bless Chris, but sometimes he would get confused with the, with the harmonies. So <laughs> there are <laughs> scenes where you'll actually see me leaning over like this going, ah, and singing him his note. This is thundering over this rock stuff so that he would come in on the right note, right? So I had to, to know everybody's notes. Yeah. That's, how, that's how it was. But I mean, it was a great experience. The, the one that stands out for me more than anybody else was George Michael. And it wasn't the first time that I'd had, uh, you know, dealings with him because his company, he and his company actually remixed the first single that I ever had in England with praise, shooting it up to, to the top of the charts. So that was the first time I'd ever had the, you know, uh, dealings with him. And then this was the second time when he came in and he rehearsed and he rehearsed and he rehearsed, come on, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it. I, uh, the ultimate, ultimate, prof you know, professional. So when you listen to him singing, singing that song, um, Somebody to Love, it is note perfect. Mm. And that hasn't been overdubbed. It hasn't been messed with. That is the way he sang it live. Just superb. Mm. No, that was, uh, it was a phenomenal, to be able to experience that live, I, I, I would have loved, loved to have been able to, to, to uh, experience that. But uh, I'm glad you sent me that video and you, you, can, uh, you can watch that, I believe, on YouTube. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So that, that's, you know, I've done some wonderful, wonderful concerts. And, you know, I have to say that those live venues, those, those, arena type venues, stadium type venues are so exciting. They're so much more exciting than working in a small club environment. Yeah. I far prefer that. If the adrenaline is going, you are just part of that audience. It is phenomenal. Just to I, look know, Yep. I, 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 uh, I, I'm glad to hear that side because someone asked me not long ago, they said, Leonard, what's it like to play in front of a lot of people? And I've had an opportunity to do that, not as, uh, not a, not on your level, Miriam, but, uh, and I said, you know, I, I remember doing a big, huge festival in, in Holland and walking out and, you know, before you walk on stage, everybody's going, you're hearing this and, and, and you're, you can feel the energy, but you walk out there and it was like, there was no connection because there's this huge stage and then they had the barriers. I mean, not that they were going to come running after me, but, but I mean, but, you know, like you it was never... just huge and it was just like I'm going, huh, you're way out there. It's like I want to be able to see the faces. So I, I prefer, which is obviously the, the intimate different. venue. Yeah. I love the small because I mean, I, I love being able to look over it. You know, you know, I I remember going through a performance coach and. Uh, Oh, it was just, it was a disastrous situation uh, because we just gotten signed, this, this band I was in, we just gotten signed by this label and they hooked us up with a performance coach. And so we went down to LA, okay. And they put us in this room with all of these mirrors and then they had the video camera, okay. All right, so they were videotaping us as we were playing, okay. All right, and... So we go to play the video back. Well, I'm doing this. <laughs> you, you know it's coming, right? I know okay. exactly what's coming. Okay. Performance cuts come, comes walks comes over to me. He goes, "Hey." He says, uh, "How much did that bass play to get in here tonight? <laughs> How much did that bass play that bass pay to get in here tonight to see you?" I said, it didn't pay anything. I, he goes, then why are you paying so much attention to it? <laughs> he says, those people out there spent their hard-earned money to come in and see you, and all you're doing is looking down at that stupid base. And I'm sitting there kind of going, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I so, thought that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> so since that, and, and a week-long worth of uh, – of, of, uh, re retooling 
okay? When I play, I am constantly looking for someone in the audience that I can make a connection with, right. okay? And a lot of the times, okay, it, it's with somebody that doesn't look like maybe they're having a good time. Uh -huh. And then I can start having kind of some fun, whether it's male or female. Okay. It doesn't matter. I, I got to be careful with the female because sometimes, you know, but at my age, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, but, but if I look like uh, my wife or my girlfriend drugged me in here tonight and I don't really want to be here, I'd rather be home, you know, having a beer, watching, you know, you know, super cross or something. I don't want to be here. So I'll have a lot, of, I'll have fun. And then sometimes if I can't make a connection when we take a break, yep. I'll walk over to him mm. and I'll say, how you doing? Oh, good, good. Well, that's all it, that's all it takes usually. Cause now when I get back on the stage, it's like, hey, yeah, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, th this is not about me, but I, I just, the, the, the difference because it, it's, it's, Plus, you were there with, with members of Queen. You were there with uh, George Michaels. I think even David Bowie was there, right? Uh, there, was, there, there was a whole bunch. Of Elton John was there. Annie Lennox yeah. was there. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah. How could you not have energy from the audience? You know. <laughs> I mean, that the audience are alive and electric, yeah. you know, as you say, even though you cannot really see faces, you can, you just get a sense of this, it's like an aura around them. And this, this connection that you have with this audience, they, it doesn't matter whether they're sitting here or there. Um, the, the largest audience that I ever played to was a million. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but it was... It was the turn, of, turn of the century. We were in Berlin at the at the Brandenburg Gate, mm. and it was with uh, an artist called Mike Oldfield. I don't know if you ever heard of him, yeah, but yeah. he had huge hits with you know tubular bells, and mm -hmm. yeah. so I was doing a concert with him, and I was um, one of the featured singers there. And literally, you just saw the sea of people going as far as the eye could stretch. It was it was phenomenal I, i've never experienced anything like that mm. since before absolutely phenomenal yeah i i can't even i can't even imagine that i i, I was watching a documentary on garth brooks and he was talking about when he walked out uh, to central park yeah right. and there was a couple million people there he says i i said i i just can't i i just can't i can't fathom that i just can't imagine that mm -hmm. you know you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know what, one of the things, Merriman, you could probably, uh, and then Rod, we haven't forgotten about you, honestly. Uh, 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 we, there's a lot of questions I, I want to ask, but Merriman, after you, so, someone asked me one time, they said, Leonard, after you come off of a performance, uh, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you come back down to earth? Yeah. And I said, okay, there's a couple things. And he said, he said, because, you know, my concept is this is maybe why rock people in music, they get involved with, with alcohol and, and drugs and different things is to kind of try to stabilize because, I mean, it's like, um, you know, you talk to artists and it's like, I'm in front of 10,000 people and they shift, they, they rush me off in the limo and then they throw me in a hotel room for the night and I'm all bare, I'm there all by myself what else am I supposed to do? And uh, I said, well, you know, you can control yourself. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, what, what do you, Marion, because you've been in these situations, how, how do you bring yourself down, back down to earth? Well, there are a couple of things. I mean, <clears throat> before you become a parent, obviously, you have no worries, no cares what you do. You stay up all night with the guys. You find a piano that's locked. You bust the piano open in, in the hotel and you sit there and you sing literally till three or four o'clock in the morning. So that's what we would do sometimes after gigs. It's particularly when we were on tour. Um, but as a parent, you know, you have to suddenly go, okay, I'm going home. I've got very young kids. I was a young parent. I had my children pretty young. Um, I have to go home there. I have to make sure that they're safe, that they're secure. That will bring you down to earth quicker than anything else. 
<laughs> Got to change the diaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> Uh, I'm grounded anyway. I mean, yeah, well, yeah. You've yeah. always been rock solid, grounded. That's why you're professional. Um, yeah, I, I yeah, I, I, uh, I, I was on a tour in Europe one time. It was, it was, I was fairly young, and uh, and uh, you know, we're coming off of almost a, you know, gigging almost every day, and. If you're a band from America and you're touring in Europe, so for some reason you, you you automatically made it. I mean, you can you can have nothing going for you except for you know you're from America, mm -hmm. all right. So you know coming down from this, and I remember one of the guys. I, I just like, okay, after the gig, okay, you go back to the hotel, and it's like, how do you, how do you, and and I've never been one to you know indulge in alcohol or I, I i i'm i'm probably one of the only ones on the planet earth that has never done drugs <laughs> okay <laughs> and i still okay so none of that stuff ever appealed to me but he told me he says i said how do you do it man because it was a band that we were touring with we were they were they were we, we were switching open i don't know if you remember the days but uh, on one gig you'd open they close the next gig you'd you'd close and you know it was just a rotating situation i said man how do you do it man how do you do it i said i just lay in bed at night you know three four o'clock in the morning and i'm just like i'm still going he goes leonard hold on he reaches in his pocket he pulls out this little bottle i wish i had a bottle but pulls out the little bottle he goes this is it i said what is it melatonin Yes. yes, I was about to say melatonin. Yeah, you go. Perfect. Yeah. To this day, I still take melatonin <laughs> because oh. it just calms you down. Oh, it stops yeah. your brain from going, ding, 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 you know. And uh, so, it, anyway, it just, you know, I, I like to ask different people, it's like, well, how do you handle that? Well, you know, nothing, like, nothing a bottle of Jack Daniels can't handle, you know. <laughs> you know. Can I tell you what my, my, um, my idea was when I was doing gigs? And most of the gigs I used to do in, in England would drive to. Okay. okay. There were 100, 200 miles. Well, it's boring going up on your own, boring coming back on your own. So I thought, I'll take friends. So sometimes I'd take a couple of friends if I could fit them in the car. You know? And so what happens is all the way up, I am a mixture of terrified and nervous. So I'm not talking. They're just talking to each other, right? Then I do the gig. And after that, oh, that, that's great. That's fantastic. So all the way back, I'm going blah, 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 like this. They're asleep. Right? So, <laughs> So this is a really good system. It didn't work at all. So. <laughs> well, this is good. This is, uh, you know, this is, is, I mean, there's young, young musicians watching this and I'm sure they're probably going to go on. Okay. What are the, what, what is the old school? What did they do? So, but uh, yeah. Awesome. So, so what you're saying, Miriam, is to have children. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you're not married, go ahead and get some kids and, <laughs> So that'll help ground you. That'll help and, ground and, you. Yeah. And, and Rod says, just bring some friends along. And mine is a, a, a bottle of uh, melatonin. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, but stay away, stay away uh, from the, you know, the, the alcohol and the drugs. And no, stuff. honestly, uh, honestly, I, I just feel that 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 is kind of artificial. There's nothing better, you know, than going out there on stage and being nervous because that's when you get your adrenaline going. And there's no bigger rush than mm. that. Mm. Doesn't matter how much you want to drink, drugs, whatever. That is the rush yeah. getting on that stage. Yeah. Well, you know, I think also too is there's a, there's there's two sides to this. You leave a gig, you come off the stage, and you are higher. Your adrenaline and it's just going here because mm -hmm. you've had an awesome night. Yeah. And then you have those gigs where you go, that sucked. <laughs> and, and I have a tale for you. Oh, yeah. Please. A wonderful <laughs> tale. And my sister and I, where we were touring with the New Seekers. Do you remember the New Seekers? Uh, the name I sounds familiar, but uh, 
the world to sing. You're in that okay. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So they were huge in uh, in Europe, I mean, in Japan, everywhere. My, my sister and I did an, a, a tour with them. We opened for them. And the empresario, the guy who brought them out, said to us, well, listen, they've got their own bass player as part of their group. He was actually part of one of the singers. Um, so we're not going to give you a bass player. <laughs> now, I thought you would understand this <laughs> more than most. <laughs> so here we are doing a complete pop act with no bass player. Oh, well, there's, there's, your, there's your heartbeat, there's your backbone. So what do we do? We went into the studio, paid for it, and we put everything down, all the backing tracks down. I mean, in those days, it was like reel to reel, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, this, excuse me, and I'm not, I'm not being uh, rude or anything like that, but this really cheesed off the guys. And so what happened was in the middle of us singing our last song, which was our big hit, the tape goes off. <laughs> in, right in the middle. And we're going, well, do we just carry on singing? What is, is the tape going to come back on? Which it never did. It's a cappella time. <laughs> I, can you imagine? I mean, yeah. we had a hit with that, with a shocking blue song called Venus. Do you remember Venus? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine doing this, A, without a bass player? Starts and off also, with a huge bass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what's yeah. actually the guitar. But um, yeah, sure. can you imagine, first off, doing that without a bass player? Mm. Secondly, can you imagine trying to sing that without any accompaniment whatsoever? Okay. It was, so talk about coming off stage and feeling <laughs> yeah. this big. Yeah. yeah. That was a good way of actually cutting our egos right down. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all relative. And, uh, you know, nights you think you're just going to have awesome nights. You sometimes you walk off and you go, gosh, did that suck? Or, you know, or, or, you know, I, I usually more, you know, internalize it and go, oh my gosh. I played so bad, you know, then the rest of the guy, you were great, man. What are you talking about? You're great. It's like, no, no, no. I just, it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, it, it didn't happen tonight. It didn't happen, but I'll be better tomorrow night. I promise. Don't, don't fire me, please. <laughs> yes, right. that, that, is, that is hilarious. Um, yeah. Maybe Rod can tell you this wonderful story. I can't remember who it was. Was Del Shannon? Who oh, had the song, yeah, yeah. The Run, Runaway? Runaway, yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. We did a whole show with all these guys from the 50s, and um, I was the only backing singer, just the one doing everything <laughs> on stage with these guys. But yeah. there was this phenomenal keyboard player called Pete Wingfield. And <laughs> difficult guy. <laughs> difficult no, to work. With. He's, <laughs> no, no, he was cool. Anyway, so what he had practiced that. <laughs> yeah, practice that and getting the sound right. I mean, I don't know if it was a prophet or what he was using. I can't remember. It was remember. a prophet five, yeah. Right, okay. Absolutely. So yeah. rehearsals, fantastic. Oh. Sounded amazing, just like the record. Something happened technical, and now let Rod take over from here. <clears throat> okay, there, there is um, the pitch shift on the on the prophet because he was playing in a particular key that he was comfortable in. So he'd shifted the key. Okay, yeah. And memorized and done everything. That's fine. And that's all right. You know, if he wants to play in C and it's actually in whatever it was, that, that's cool. Nobody's going to know the difference. Unless, of course, somebody shuts the power off on the stage and it reboots everything, right? And he didn't have to use the profit until that very moment. But he knew it was on and it was on the right program, <sighs> right? So... And it came, not did it, but in the wrong key. In the wrong key, completely. Oh my gosh! Absolutely, yeah. And oh. it, I mean, it's just so out there on its own. What do you do? You just stop playing. So, <laughs> so. Oh, that is so. You know, we were doing it. We were do, doing a. We were doing a gig in Springfield, Missouri. I remember this to this day. The keyboard player was playing a uh, Roland Seven Hundred Seven. Remember the old Roland 707? Seven, seven, okay. All right. The power went out while we were playing. Okay. Which, when it came back on, it didn't reboot. 
okay? Mm -hmm. And he didn't have any of his uh, any stuff backed up. Right. So he was now back to a raw keyboard. Oh. I mean, he got so mad. He mm -hmm. took the keyboard and and tossed it off of the, he had a two-tier stand he tossed it off okay well what what does that mean for us okay it's it's the 80s we're we're kind of this uh you know this this keyboard sounding band and we've yeah. got no keyboard you know keyboard. it was just like and he goes running back i mean swearing he goes back he runs backstage and leaves us on stage and we're just sitting there going okay we're here in front of about five thousand yeah. people here and what do we do so yeah no it's just like uh yeah so bass I, solo yeah. bass yeah. solo well and fortunate we had a guitar player his name's michael gregory and uh he could solo the socks off anybody so he that's in, in fact that's exactly what he did he just uh yeah. He just uh, he 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 razzled dazzled the rest of the night. So, but oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna put some links because Miriam, like I said, this could be a six hour show easy. I want people to look at your uh, to, to 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 go to your music, and so I'm gonna put your website up. Uh, I'll be posting your website up, uh, and uh, I want them to look it out. So, but there's a couple of questions I want to ask you guys here, uh, Miriam. What do you think about the music that's being made today by 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 current artists? Okay. <clears throat> let, let me let me clarify that because it's like right. whoa, you know, it's like you know, it, it, it's a difficult one to uh, to answer with without. I have to be completely honest about this, right? Because um, I don't get a lot of the music that. I, <laughs> that is around today. You know, I I really don't get it. And it's not because I feel that I am out of touch with music, but I'm one of those people who loves a good song, you know, a good Diane Warren song that's got great, you know, changes, chord changes and a, and a beginning and a middle and an end. And I cannot really relate. I mean, I've, you know, of course, we had the odd Eminem song, which was kind of cool and Snoop Dogg or whatever. But I, when it comes to really the down to the the rap and and what they call R and B today, I, I just I cannot relate. I really can't. Hmm. I I I am so grateful to hear you say that, um, because I am like you. I I I don't I don't get it. You know, I was watching a documentary on Tom Petty, which I'm a big, huge fan of Dom, Tom Petty. Mm -hmm. And he just said, you know, nowadays we're just celebrating mediocrity. And I'm sitting there kind of going, that's sad. Yeah. Okay. Because what's happened is, and, and you know this, Maram, you've had to work. You've had to work to develop your craft. Mm -hmm. Rod, you've had to work to develop your craft. I've had to work, okay? Uh, and you think as long as I've worked, I'd be better, but <laughs> but I've had to work to develop my craft. You've got musicians that go to, you know, order some stuff online and three to four days later, they're making music out of their bedroom and they, and they think it's, they think it's music. I mean, I, I don't, get it and 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 some of it's being processed i mean some of it don't get me wrong some of it is good and i don't want to knock anybody for you know for what uh for what they're doing uh as far as being able to express themselves but uh you know i mean mary am i listening to your stuff it's like no this is no amateur this woman has put her ten thousand hours probably four or five times over okay in to develop what what she's doing, and and Rod, I know you're you're you've been you've engineered a lot of what Marion's do, doing in the in the in the in the current, and it's like you got to know what you're doing. You got you can't just go, oh, I bought this 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 box from you know from from musician's friend and, and listen, gee, 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 gee. and if you do that, gee, 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 you know, and I just sit there and go, it it. it if you're going to move people like what you do, Miriam, okay, you have to have, there has to be a, a foundation, mm. okay, 
There has to be a foundation because what the stuff that you do, I mean, I listen to this. I mean, there's just no, I call it mojo. Okay. There's just no mojo. There's just nothing. It's just like, it's, it's, it's noise. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, I don't want to criticize them because I mean, there's some people out there making music in their bathroom that have sold millions and millions of dollars worth of, you know, music. And I, it's like, okay, well, Leonard, show me, uh, you know, yeah. sh show me your three or four platinum albums. And I'm going, no, I can't do that. But so I'm not knocking them. It's just, you know, I understand. So, so Rod, you're, you're, you're what, what are your, what are your. I answer the same question. Most of it, like Mary, kind of, it floats over me. Um, and I, I try not to let it affect me. Um, in the past, things have affected me. You know, the whole punk, I mean, the original yeah. punk era yeah. Yeah. was very bad. I was almost gave up music, you know, because I had to record the, the Sex Pistols. So, <laughs> and that was that was very disturbing. You know, I almost gave up music there. I thought, if this is what it's about, you know, that really, compared to some of the stuff I've heard since, was bad, but it was there for a reason. It was just angry and it was yeah. just, you know, against society so i can understand that but no i my son wanted to program stuff and he got into it quite early and he said uh okay um i said well what are you doing he said oh, i'm going to do a bit of like hip-hop and so it was trip hop no it oh. turned into trip hop okay. not something much better right but i said okay uh that's what you want to do let's just get a loop of this and a couple of loops of that and we'll do, do it on and you know then 10 minutes you've got a song I said now you've learned keyboard you've learned piano if you find that challenging then go ahead carry on and he sort of said mm, yeah and I don't know what you mean yeah it's not really is it <laughs> it's just like you know the, the same sound the same key the same you know and just stuff happening over the top of it now having said that in all genres, there's going to be something that sticks out. And then you go, oh, actually, I like that. That's cool. They've really spent the time. You know? But coming from a different area with Miri, yeah, it was always about getting the voice as pure as we possibly could. You know, we walked in, in to mix her first album where I was sitting back and letting a, a really guy, a really good engineer of the time do it. So I could be, you know, subjective. And he said, my God, he said, how on earth did you get that fabulous vocal sound? <laughs> and I, all done at home, you know, up in the bedroom, basically. And I said, well, let's look at it. A brand new Neumann U87. U87, okay. Yeah. An analog Mackie desk with no EQ, and into a digital of the time, you know, the best digital we can have at the time. I said, but nothing in the way, no EQ, no, nothing, you know, get it from here, from the voice into the machine as quick as you can and as clean as you can. And oh, by the way, did I mention she's the best singer in the yeah, world? I was, yeah. <laughs> was going to go, I said, yeah, there's the, there's the key element right there. You know, and, and, <laughs> It's 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 an old equation. Bleep in one end, bleep yeah. out the other end. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's yeah. You take what's really good and you try and not mess it up. That's what the recording industry is about, basically, for me. Well, it that's uh, you know that's that, that's awesome. That uh, you, you know, I, I like hearing your perspective. I don't know if it's it, it's just a, number one to justify how I feel. <laughs> 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 but uh you know I, I mean you know i still go back and you know I, I i listen to you know the things that touched me what i was playing and and i've said this on my on the podcast before what i was playing was not really what i was listening to okay i was not into hard rock i wasn't into zeppelin um, I really wasn't even into the who, um, I wasn't into, I was listening to bands like Chicago, Blood, Sweat and Tears, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, yep. uh, 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 that, that moved me, that touched, that touched me. And that's what I, 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 I wanted to do, but 
you know, I also had rent to pay. And uh, so, so, so I did what uh, I did what paid the rent. And uh, as a bass player, you know, I, I've never, ever been out of a job and uh, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. And, and uh, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, I've always been able to express myself and, 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 I, and I love the instrument. And uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, what I what I played was not necessarily what and because you're a bass player, you're not you're not a lead guitar player, you're not a lead singer. So you don't have that control. You're, you're basically kind of going, OK, I'll follow that person whatever they want, I'll follow that. And, you know, and you do it and then, oh, well, all of a sudden we, you know, we got a re recording contract. Oh, I guess we're on the road. I guess, oh, I guess we're touring and we're doing this. So you just, you just, you just go along with it. You just, as the rock rolls down the hill, you just go along with it. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been an interesting process and, uh, you know, I love it. So, you know, this is a great segue because uh, we, like I said, we could, this could very easily be a six hour show. Cause I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could get deep, we could get deep, especially when we bring the bottle of Jack Daniels out and start, you know, and just look at it. Just, yeah. just leave it out there. Yeah. 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 yeah because people don't know. I've had, no. I've had questions. Leonard, what do you have in that cup? And I said, well, <laughs> You know, I think today I have Coke Zero. Oh, yeah. The show is sponsored by Coke Zero. No, it's not. I don't know drink fun. water, but uh, today I just thought, you know what, I want a Coke Zero. I haven't had, I had, a, I haven't had a Coke Zero, too. You know, that's the other thing about COVID. Once get, having COVID, it changes your taste buds. Wow. Some of the things you used to like, gone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's kind of like interesting. Now, so. now you know how a pregnant woman feels. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I, I kind of know how a pregnant woman feels. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're looking very trim, may I yeah, say. Absolutely. Well, it's this black, it's this black jacket here. And, okay. and my, and oh, oh, did you see my retro? Uh, tower tower records mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, uh, the original Tower Records, uh, was birthed right here in Sacramento. So uh, most of every album I have over here in my album collection, which I'm pointing over there because that's where it's at, uh, is uh, I probably bought either either at Tower Records or I bought at a live concert. So, uh, but uh, so I'm I'm very I'm very I'm very partial to Tower Records, and I wish they, you know. But all things must pass. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so hey, great segue. Let's move into some fun questions. Although we we've had some fun questions. So, but again, guys, I've had so much fun. I, I just want to thank you guys for for indulging me for this for the last hour or so. And uh, the, the pleasure uh, is all ours. And thank you so much for asking us. That uh, you know, when I reached out to you, I said, "Man, I haven't I haven't contacted him in a while." And I, I hope they remember who I am. And uh, oh. <laughs> you know, I, I keep on saying to myself, I I just pray to God that one day somebody will pick up our our little show I, and put it on the air. Yeah, it's it's such a good show. It's I, even I think it. I think it is still. I think there's still opportunities. I think because because no one's done it yet. That tells me something right there that we were supposed we're meant to do this okay? okay there's been some other situations in fact if you notice that even uh um american idol had come back because yeah. at the time we we were talking american idol i think went off because of the voice the voice kind of basically sucked up the demographic and then yeah. there's uh, there was there was i think a, a songwriter thing came out and the different but no one's done what we have. Oh, we, no. we have it. So we'll 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 just keep we'll just keep uh, All the hammering away. Those who wait. It's huh? a phenomenal concept. Yes. It'll yeah. happen. It so, will happen. Yeah. So let's ask. Listen, I got a couple of fun questions, and since I've got the two of you, in fact, you're my first duo uh, interview that I've done. So, and I couldn't I couldn't pick two more beautiful people than you guys. Oh, so, thank so you. I mean, yeah, you know. And, and and Rod, you're 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 pretty handsome too. So, <laughs> but uh, 
Uh, so listen, I'm going to ask, uh, Miriam, I'm going to ask you a question here, okay? And this is a question that I've never had anybody answer on the show only because they don't want to answer it. Uh, mm. They don't want to offend anybody, but I, I think you're the type that you're not offensive, but I, I don't think you'll be afraid not to answer. So, okay. So what is the best song you think was ever written and who performed it? written, recorded, and who performed it. Right. Um, we were talking about the Beatles before. This is uh, this is a Beatles song, but it was written by George Harrison. And it's the song Something. It, when you listen to the structure of the song, you listen to the lyrics, you listen to the, the chords, just the emotion, the, everything about that song just speaks to me. It's just you know, amazing. Um, so that, that, I mean, obviously you, it's very difficult to, to say, well, that's the only song that I think is wonderful, but I do think that there's something incredibly special about that song. You know, in the same way as I think that Bridge Over Troubled Water is another one of those songs, you know, written, performed by Simon uh, and Garfunkel. I think it was uh, actually just Paul Simon who wrote it, but hmm. those songs, they're epic. You, you just, we don't hear them anymore. I, I, I hope some of that stuff comes back. I, I hope there's a resurgent or, or, or something happens. But, well, that was very, very interesting because, I mean, if, if, if you're, you know, in the audience, you in the audience, if you were to sit back and say, okay, tell me what your song, usually it's a song that moves you, mm -hmm. okay? And, and because mu music is so, I mean, it's got to move me. It's got to move me. It's got to say something to me. It's like, it's got to, it's got to speak to me. And like I said, I was listening to your stuff today, Miriam. I mean, just like a whole hour and something long that it was on YouTube. I just like all of your, a whole bunch of your songs. I just sat there and I went, oh my gosh, uh, you know, does she know what she's doing to people? I mean, in a very, very, very good way. So, so, well, listen on that note here. Okay. You, you gave me the best song, Miriam. What is one song that you wish never existed? Okay. And I have a few of those, but I'm not going to tell you, but I, I want to hear yours. Oh, that's nice. Anything, anything that was recorded by Adam and the Ants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I would have to tend to agree with you on that. I was going to say, you can, you can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, that error, that error would just, it just. Uh, what was it? It, what it was, it it was, was like, like punk and uh, what did they call it? New, uh, oh, it was kind of in between punk and romance. And, romance, yeah. new romance. Yeah. yeah, new romance. And yeah, it was new, yeah, new black, horrible. Yeah, black. The, and, the, and the guys all yodel, no, when they sang, you know, I mean, I ju just sorry, but. Nope. 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 Okay. All right. This is perfect. Well, you know, Rod, you being in the engineering field, I mean, uh, that error just seemed to be like, oh, guess what we invented? We, there are synthesizers. So let's use a synthesizer for everything, yeah. which there's no soul to synthesizer. Now you put someone that knows what they're doing on a Hammond B3. Forget about it. I mean, it's all over. It's church, baby. It's church, okay? Mm -hmm. But on a synthesizer, it's like you just want to just like poke your eyes out with pencils <laughs> or your ears and just stab your brain and go, yeah, but you know, you're right. It's like, what happened that it, it's like, you know, I think one time I heard this, it's like, well, it's just about a bunch of young people pissed off at nothing and they don't know what they're pissed off about. <laughs> it's like just, I mean, the lyric is like, What's going on? Yep. Yeah. What's going on? So anyway, yeah. well, awesome, Mary. So, so Rod, let's uh, let's move on to a question I have for you. If you were just if you were stranded on a deserted island, and you could only have three albums, what would those albums be? Um, I have to assume I'm on my own. You're on your own. You, you're not with that no lovely idea. woman there. <laughs> I have no idea how long I'm going to be on. So uh, this is a real this is a real throwback. 
number one would be I am butterfly. <laughs> but in a garden of Eden. In a garden of Eden, right? Um, and um, and a year's supply of of THC edibles uh, to remember why I liked it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Keep it clean. It's a family oh, no, show. It's totally clean. <laughs> this this is pure all legal stuff. Okay, fine. Um, then dark side of the moon. Oh. Okay, right. And enough THC <laughs> to finally try to like it. Okay. Instead of thinking it's a load of pretentious twaddle, which I did at the time. But okay. <laughs> a load of potential. Potential twaddle. Oh my God. That that that's gotta be that's gotta be put. That's a t-shirt right there. Oh, oh pretentious <laughs> twaddle, yeah, right. Um the last one really means something to me. And it's the Crusaders, previously known as the Jazz Crusaders, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, that original, and I call it the White Album because what was given to me was their promotional White Album. Okay. Which uh, I played to death, almost through to the other side. Somebody borrowed it from me, gave it to these guys who I didn't know who they were at the time. They subsequently called themselves the average white man, right? Okay. okay. They, learned, they learned every sound and every structure on that Crusaders album, put some funny bits of vocal over it, and that was the average white band. But that Maybe. original Crusaders album, absolutely lovely. It's just had a, a magic feel to it. Effortless, effortless music, and it just got me going. Mm. Well, you you you've hit some gold. You hit the, some of the gold standard there. That was yeah. Uh, I I I I don't think I'm. I don't. I'm not sure about how old you are, Rod. But I don't. I don't think you're too much older than me. But I remember when when uh, Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And because I didn't do drugs, a lot of my friends were you know smoking a a lot of weed and they would oh, you gotta listen to this loaded man you just like with the headphones but i remember putting the headphones on and you know the the the, the panning and the phasing and oh, the different yeah. stuff it was like i mean it's just like it was it was like i can't believe this is going on it's <laughs> so awesome mm -hmm. sure. i mean it's 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 it, it was like it was like 3d sound <laughs> okay i mean you could there was actually dimensions i mean you close your eyes and there's dimensions i remember going to my bedroom and shutting the lights off and just listening to it and, and kind of anyway but yeah that's that's uh, what used to amaze me about that sort of particular stuff was that a lot of the guys that i knew would be taking the stuff and then playing and I could not conceive, I mean, uh, of, of how they could do this. I mean, I knew the, the bass player from Joe Cocker's band, you know, and he said, oh, I used to drop a couple of tabs of acid before I go on stage, especially at a large festival. And I said, from, from what I know and from what I understand, you know, if you play one note, that's probably good for an hour, you know. If you, <laughs> how did you oh. get on? And he said, he said, I, 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 oh, they tell me I was great. He said, <laughs> he said, I had one nasty moment where I thought the front of the stage was the Grand Canyon. And I, that. <laughs> but other, other than that, no. So, how could people do that? I, just, I don't. I, I have, you know, I can't, even to this day, I cannot. I mean, I can probably maybe have a beer, half a beer, and that's it. I, I just, I just, I, I, if I was good enough to where I thought I could get away with it, I would probably, you know, have a Jack and Coke or whatever, whatever. It's like, to me, it's like, no, I need full attention when I'm on stage. Yeah. Now, the key to me, when you were talking and Mary was talking about, you know, the high is communicating with the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, if you're stoned out of your brain, you not only do not remember the gig, you know, but you don't get any of that appreciation and any of that natural high, which is better than anything you're going yeah, to get. Yeah, of a you know, um, that is, that is yeah. well, listen, guys, I, I appreciate you so much again for, for being on the show and, and uh, sharing a little uh, behind the, uh, behind the, the, the man behind the curtain 
situation. And, uh, uh, like, again, we could, we could probably do this all night. And, uh, uh, but, uh, part I, 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 part two, please. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just, again, thank you guys. And, thank, uh, thank you, you know, so much. So I, I, Miriam, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to list your, your Facebook. Uh, okay, what, what, really what else, what else do you have? Do you have, you have something I know, cause I know you're constantly working on stuff. Is there anything that you want to, if you, anything you want to uh, make make the audience aware of right now? Yep, yeah. We've and in fact, uh, a few days ago, we uh, AO Music, which is a what I call a world um, fusion uh, project that okay. I've been doing for years. We've had four or five albums out. We've we've won awards and stuff. Um, it's also kind of tied into a um, a children's charity if you like, even mm. though it's not a charitable situation, but we are tied in with a nonprofit um, to help kids you know, from all over the world who come into difficulties. So uh, it's, um, it, we have some wonderful musicians on there from all over the world, from India, from St. Louis, from everywhere. Um, and our fifth album has just been released, fifth or sixth, I can't remember. And it already, it jumped into the charts in, in in India, number one. So yeah. amazing, just yeah. incredible. So it's exactly. it's called Katumba. We'll if you, send you a link. We'll send you a link. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm actually working, working on my new website right now. I'm actually changing it over because the old website was was completely flash written, right? So it's complete. Now you can't actually play it on anything. So we are actually having the entire thing redone now. So uh, uh, yes, Facebook is where it's at. I have a, a professional page and I have a, um, a page that people can just write to me on, yeah, send YouTube, me messages. YouTube, anything YouTube? Um, YouTube. It's full of it. What? <laughs> full of it. Full of it. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube okay. is full of it. I have, apparently I have my own Pandora um, channel, channel yeah. as well. Oh, awesome. So, okay, awesome. Well. <laughs> I, I will suss out these links and I'll make sure that they're posted right below you guys. Okay. Wonderful. So, so both of you just point down, just say, look for me here. Look, there we look go. Right here. <laughs> look <right here. laughs> but yeah. no, because I, I want, I want the people so much, Miriam, to, to, to hear your music. And uh, I think there's a lot of healing in what you do. Okay. Yes. And, and you, know, uh, you, you kind of space it. It's funny that you say that because I, I found that I've been pigeonholed in different ways. So in America, I was always new age, always for some reason. Uh, in England, they always categorize, you know, they put me into the classical category because they didn't know where to put me. In Germany, the whole of Europe uh, classified me as adult contemporary, but in Japan, I am under healing music. So there you go. You know, well, I was just like, again, I, I was listening to you today and it was there, there was a lot of healing factor going on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, we've just gone through a year full of lockdowns and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked we talked earlier before the show, you know, and, and what how much effect this has all had on everything. And it's like, I think we need we need healing. We yeah. need um we need some understanding, but 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 your music, I just sat there and I went, oh. I, it was it was like drinking pure water. It was like, ah, yeah. oh, this is yeah. so good. That's so, wonderful. Yeah, you yeah. know, and I'm not saying this because I, I know you, Mary. I, I mean, I know you, but I'm I'm just being real honest with you. I think I think people will just thoroughly love your stuff. And uh uh so but uh oh. So anyway, well, listen, I'm going to let you guys go because you guys have been so gracious with your time with me. And uh, I've, I've had such a great time talking about it. let's let's not uh, let's let's not be strangers. Uh, not at and, all. And, not and I know you you guys have been going off on your own. You know, you had this stuff and I've got, you know, I produced a TV show in them, you know, in, in you know, in between all this stuff. And, you know, and uh, and, uh, you know, and I'm off. I'm off to the races with different things going on. And, uh, you know, I've never. Which I'd like to find out about. I'd yeah. like to know what you've been up to and, yeah, and sure. how COVID has actually impacted, you know, the, the reality TV. It, it's pretty much shut everything down. I'll be yeah. real honest with you. We were I was supposed to go to season two with uh, the current show I was at. 
but it, it just kind of basically shut literally everything down and to to much to it, not to get into the to the weeds of everything but it just kind of it, yeah. it kind of made certain people have other decisions about other things and let's let's focus on this so it basically kind of left so i mean i've got some things i've got some things in the works right now but uh uh you know i'm just uh i'm you know I'm just doing a little bit of here and there and everywhere. And, uh, you know, just luckily that I'm, you know, six feet above ground right. um, thanks right. to COVID and, uh, you know, and uh, just enjoying and, and then, and then uh, reconnecting with, you know, wonderful people like you guys. And uh, wow. so let's, let's, let's not be strangers. Let's That's uh, life. Absolutely. absolutely. And let's, bless you. And I'm yeah. so, I'm so happy that you are here with us healthy and you know let's let's just let's do more absolutely let's do it and let's keep it up and you know by the way rod my birthday is coming up april 30th and uh you know that uh that less paul you have uh oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately mary's is just a little bit before that so all my money is going to be spent. okay okay all right okay i i am uh I am so close to closing uh, an opportunity to, and I, I'm going to leave him nameless only because, uh, okay. but he's a guitar manufacturer. And uh, if, if, if I can make that happen, I'm definitely going to milk him out of a, out of a, out of a, one of his guitars. So <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. You know, I, you, you know, I love you guys. And, uh, of course, and, of course. uh, and I, and I wish only the best for you guys. So listen, well, listen, I'm going to, let's sign off. Let's let these people that are watching, uh, you know, uh, turn us off and then they can talk, they can talk about us all they want. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, listen, blessings and uh, we will, we will stay in touch and um, we will see you down the road. Absolutely. Okay. Lots and lots of love. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.